One person says, well, I have these rights. And another says, well, I have these rights. And then the court becomes the arbiter on which side to land. In the past couple of weeks, the Supreme Court of the United States released several anticipated rulings regarding student loans, affirmative action, gay rights, and religious rights. Professor Barbara A. Perry at the Miller Center explains these cases and their rulings' impacts. Professor Perry is a specialist on the Supreme Court, and the first case that she discusses is Groff v. DeJoy. Gerald Groff is an evangelical Christian postal worker who believes that Sundays are for worship, not work. He resigned from his job because it required him to work on Sunday. On June 29th, the Supreme Court released their decision on the Groff v. DeJoy case. And the court, interestingly enough, nine to nothing. So liberals and conservatives agreeing that um, people who have these religious beliefs in the workplace should be accommodated unless it's an extreme burden on a business or in this case, the Postal Service. Professor Perry explains that the court's support of free practice of religion may push the boundaries of the First Amendment's Establishment Clause. The clause prohibits the government from making a law that would result in the establishment of an official religion. So we do have a tension then between free exercise of religion and when the government supports that, as it has tended to do in this country, you do run the risk of kind of sliding over the line, not necessarily into an established church, but in the government's support of religion, which seems to cross over that establishment clause or what Thomas Jefferson called the wall of separation between church and state. Another religious rights case from this term is 303 Creative LLC v. Ellenis. Colorado resident Lori Smith owns a graphic design business and wanted to create websites for weddings. However, she felt that under the Colorado Anti-Discrimination Act, she would have to create websites for marriages that she did not support due to religious beliefs. The nuance, I think, that is in that ruling is that the court expressed what it called an expressive right on the part of this woman to freely exercise her religion by not having to express something or create some expression that is a website that she did not want to create because it violated her religion. On June 30th, the Supreme Court ruled that Smith has the right to refuse creating websites for same-sex marriages. As we know, the Supreme Court some years ago approved of marriage equality and supported it under our Constitution. But now it would seem to run counter then to marriage equality. Additionally, the recent Biden v. Nebraska case directly impacts college students and recent college graduates. Last year, President Joe Biden announced a debt relief plan that would forgive student loans up to $10,000 and government grants up to $20,000. However, the court ruling of Biden v. Nebraska on June 30th changed the president's debt relief plan. So people as of last summer who had up to $30,000 in student loans thought that they wouldn't have to pay that back. But the court ruled that the president cannot take that action unilaterally, that that would have to come through Congress. It was a legislative power that the president was using unconstitutionally. Another court ruling that affects college students is Students for Fair Admissions v. Harvard. On June 29th, the Supreme Court ruled that race-based affirmative action programs and university admissions violates the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. The decision will no doubt impact race-based diversity in college admissions. However, Professor Perry describes one of the optimistic nuances of this ruling. While the university may not be able to have an official policy that relates to race-based affirmative action, that admissions officer can, officers can take that into consideration when they're reading the essay of a student. So I think that's a nuance that gives some hope to those who support race-based affirmative action in higher education. Currently, the Supreme Court consists of a conservative majority. How has the current number of Republican appointed versus Democratic appointed justices influenced the rulings of these court cases? There is absolutely no doubt that a more conservative court in these social areas and some financial and business areas uh, are resulting from having six members of the court now appointed by Republican presidents as opposed to three who are more liberal appointed by Democratic Party presidents. 
An overwhelming concern about the regression of America has surfaced since the release of these case rulings. Professor Perry illustrates that it depends on an individual's definition of progress. For conservatives uh, who want to preserve a certain vision of America, uh, they view it as progress to be able to go back to an America they believed in prior to 50 or 60 years ago. If one is viewed as what is considered a progressive now or a liberal, um, one would view the court as going backwards and not progressing. The rulings of these cases have made significant changes regarding America's future. However, the extent of these changes is yet to be determined. I'm Aithi Goginani, WUVA.